What's going on? I'm Wilner Lewis from WSU Sports, breaking down some headlines that happened in the sports community over the past week. This time on video instead of in audio. This is a new change. I don't really, I'm not really in front of the camera. But let's get to the stories. Seton Hall leads two sets to one here in this best of five matchup between the Seton Hall Pirates and the Hofstra Pride. I'm Wilner Lewis here on this broadcast. The Seton Hall was able to take a dominant 25 to 20 advantage in the previous set, set number three. What's going on, sports fans? I'm Wilner Lewis giving you major headlines from the sports world. Wilner Lewis, heaven hell for this matchup between the St. John's Red Storm and the Seton Hall Pirates. The Pirates with a 46-32 advantage as there's about a minute and a half left to go until the second half starts. And heaven, I mean, with the when the starting lineups came out, we saw that Lauren Park Lane wasn't in the starting lineup. We see her that she's not shooting around with the team right now. And we kind of expected, you know, who's really going to step up. And one player that you did say was going to step up is probably Andre Espinosa Hunter. And she has been leading the charge for the Pirates. 22 points on 9 for 17 shooting. Thank you, Chris. I'm Wanda Lewis in studio bringing you the first half under eight sports update. Seeing Hall and Michigan State are facing each other in the fifth annual Gavit tip-off games, an early season series of eight games played between the Big Ten and the Big East. The games are in honor of Big East founder Dave Gavit. Currently, the Big Ten has four out of the seven has four out of the seven games played uh, on Monday. DePaul beat Iowa 93-78. On Tuesday, Michigan defeated Creighton 79-69 and Butler routed Minnesota 64-56. Wednesday, Ohio State trounced Villanova 76-51. Marquette came back from a double-digit deficit to beat Purdue 65-55 and Northwestern defeated Providence 72-63. Earlier today, Penn State handled Georgetown 81-66. Let's hope Seton Hall can even up the Gavin's game this year. That'll do it for me in studio We'll go to our beat writer, Michael Daly, for a sideline report at the Prudential Center. Jasmine Smith, who has the starting spot for Lauren Park Lane, she has eight points. And one thing that Seton Hall has been able to do well is force St. John's to commit personal fouls. They're second in the nation in terms of not giving up personal fouls, only 13 on average. They have 12 so far in this matchup as the whistle blows to start off this third quarter, and the Red Storm will have possession of the ball. Flipping sides going right to left in the front court. The Red Storm in their road red. The Pirates in their home white. As it started off, it will be another personal foul for the Red Storm. Unique Dre called for a moving screen, and the turnover as well as the foul will allow Seton Hall to have possession of the ball only seven seconds in. Unique Drake stuck her hip out there on that one. Maya Jackson, I don't know if she sold it or what, but that looked like a pretty rough collision right in front of the ref, like you mentioned. Another turnover and foul for the Red Storm. Drake, her first personal foul, Seton Hall with a 46-32 advantage going left to right in the front court. It will be Maya Jackson handling the point guard duty. She crosses over and has it at the far sideline. Now Espinosa Hunter with it between the circles. The dish is just off to Elmore. Elmore just leaves it right for Elmore. Getting his screen, Lalani Correa will be the one guarding Espinosa Hunter. Jackson has it, 14 seconds on the shot clock, getting it down low to Elmore, and being able to poke it loose is Kodesha Bailey. And it will be seen Hall still with possession, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Bit of a dangerous post-entry pass there. Bailey knocks that one away. Pirates now inbounding on the baseline. Jackson getting into Espinosa Hunter. Her three-pointer, that one through off the missed defense. And she continues her scoring, 49-32 is the advantage. Espinosa Hunter with 20 Five points on the afternoon. Wonderful baseline out of bounds play. Andre Spinoza Hunter gets open, catch and shoot three, and she knocks it down. She averaged 24 points in Seton Hall's last three games where they won 3 and 0. As the Red Storm with Vilani Correa on the left wing, she will drive right, pull up, and is able to draw the foul on Espinosa Hunter. That will be her third personal foul, and Correa will go to the line to shoot too. Espinosa Hunter has been getting the better of the matchup between her and Correa. Espinosa Hunter with 25 points and six rebounds. Correa with Four points and two rebounds heading into some free throws here. Look for Leilani Correa to be much more aggressive in the second half. You also got to keep an eye on the foul mark as well because that was Espinosa Hunter. Third personal foul. Correa has two as her first free throw is able to get through the first points for the Red Storm in the first second half. They are still down by 16. 907 left to go in the third period. The second free throw by Correa, that one in as well. So 49-35 will now be the score 
as the Pirates will head right into the front court. On the near side is Jackson, guarded by Drake. She will just hand it right to Smith. And now Espinosa Hunter with between the circles. Dishing it off to Elmore. Elmore will just leave it for Espinosa Hunter. She'll drive in left, pumping under, misses the shot attempt, though, rebounded by Jackson. Smith, pump fake, runner, that one off the rim and out. However, Desiree Elmore, third chance opportunity for the Pirates. As Smith, open three-pointer on the right wing. That one off, but a bounce up is able to get it inside to the Pirates, and it will be blocked out of bounds by Unique Drake for the Red Jasmine, Storm. Oh, didn't mean to cut you off there, Will, but Jasmine Smith getting some solid looks offensively. Both of her three-point attempts in this game have been a little long. The Pirates taking advantage, looking to get an extra possession here. Same inbounds play, same result as Espinosa Hunter gets another three-pointer in this same left wing spot, back-to-back three-pointers. And 52-34 is the advantage for the Pirates. And after that one, she has some words for Leilani Correa talking that smack. I like it. As she should, as she is getting the best out of one of the better Big East players as she was on the preseason all-team. As Alani Correa, her three-pointer, left wing three, that one off, rebounded though by Bailey. The Red Storm still with possession. The pass to Correa, that one off, pushing the pace is the Red Storm, excuse me, the Pirates, and it will be a Red Storm foul, and Jasmine Smith, the end one basket, getting the hoop and the harm, and the Pirates are coming out, guns blazing here in this third period, heaven. What a run the Pirates are on right now, 8-2 to two in the third period. Right there, defense to offense. Leilani Correa tried to get Espinosa Hunter back with a three of her own from the opposite left wing. Couldn't get that one to fall. And the Pirates running in transition. Jasmine Smith snags the long outlet pass, finishes through contact. Big bucket for her, and she's in double figures. And Unique Drake now in foul trouble as she had to check out. She has four personal fouls. Jasmine Smith, her free throw, that one missed. Desiree Elmo, though, on the offensive glass. She will back down, gets it to Andre Espinosa Hunter. Thought about a three, but Kodesha Hoppy, who played great defense. And Jasmine Smith, out on the drive attempt, loses the ball into the hands of Raven Peoples. The pass over to Hoppy by newly checked in Camry Clegg. That one goes out of bounds off the Pirates, so it will remain Red Storm ball. Man, Desiree Elmore has just been all over the court this afternoon. She somehow managed to make her way over, deflect the outlet pass, allow the Pirates to get set in the half court defensively. A 20 ball, Seton Hall leads 54 34, 7 45 left to go in the third period as the Red Storm with it on the left side. A great screen by. Emma Nolan allows Correa to get an open lane into the basket. 54-36 now to score the Pirates with advantage, and they have the ball between the circles. Desiree Elmore, she'll get a right elbow to Espinosa Hunter, and Hunter will just leave it for Jackson, who drives in. Left-handed layup, up and under, it's good. And a similar play on both ends there. Posting up, Espinosa Hunter hands it off to Maya Jackson for the lay-in. Clegg, open runway, pulls up. That one misses off the hands of Jack. Jasmine Smith rebounded by Alexia Lesh. Jackson will now drive in, has to clear it back out, gets to the Espinosa Hunter between the circles. Quick trigger. That one just rimmed out, rebounded. It's Raven Peoples for the Red Storm, and they will have it right to left into the front court. Three minutes of action played in the third period. Seton Hall with a 20-point advantage, and it will be a timeout by the Red Storm, and it will be a timeout here on our broadcast. 56-36 is the score in favor of the Pirates. When we come back, don't go anywhere. You're listening to Seton Hall Women's Basketball on 89.5 FM, WSLU, the flagship station. Now, out of collegiate sports and moving over to professional sports for the time being, the NBA bubble has been absolutely tremendous to look at both on the court and off the court. We've got crazy shots that have been going in during games. We've had entertaining games as a whole. We even had a double overtime game that happened this week and some drama that's happening amongst players off the court. Things are getting a little spicier, spicier than some wings that you might get at Buffalo Wild Wings. But the thing to note is we're not even in the playoffs yet. There's still some games that have to be happening. There's still some seeding that has to be happening before we get to the playoffs. So things are getting really exciting and you might want to make sure you keep it locked on those NBA games. Lastly, let's talk about Seton Hall, shall we? And if you're a Seton Hall fan, I need you to say the phrase with me. Pow from Los Angeles? You'll have some time to adjust, but Tyler Powell from Ribbit Academy in California committed to the Pirates this past week, marking the second Pirate to commit in the class of 2021. Ryan Conway was the first. Both teams still doing some final adjustments here before 
Set number four takes place here in historic Walsh Gymnasium on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey in the continental United States of America on the planet Earth. As we continue to go farther out, the Milky Way galaxy, I don't think I could go out any farther than that. But we appreciate you tuning in to the Pirate Sports Network, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, for live commentary and broadcast and viewage of this matchup. Both teams still slowly getting adjusted. Some substitutions happening here for Seeing Hall. And Seeing Hall will be starting off set number four with the serve. That's Taylor and Jakubowski. Jakubowski. Five kills, 30 assists to her name. She serves it. And the Hofstra Pride to get under it. Sarah Pierre will give the Pride the first points of set number four. Right down the middle. And they lead 1-0. And it's been a, a attack by committee for the Hofstra Pride, but leading in kills and back to serve Madeline Matheny. As Seton Hall gets the points right back, Julia Wilkins gets the kill. Her seventh kill of the afternoon, a sophomore from Mason, Ohio. An All-American in 2018, was third on the team in kills in 2019 with 208 kills. Two 12 kills per set. It's Perry Lucas back to serve for the Pirates. She gets it over. And now the Hofstra Pride with it. And it'll be another kill by Zaire Abdul Rahim. And Zaire Abdul Rahim, she didn't play on the team last year. She was on, but didn't really see any action in 2019. The native out of Baltimore, Maryland. She was third on the team this season, though, with kills and 13 kills in those two matchups after Pride were able to play as Seton Hall retakes the lead, or excuse me, ties everything up. Two all is the score. And Seton Hall will be back to serve. Julia Wilkins with the jump serve, gets it over the net, and now near side to Pride. The hit cross court, but Seton Hall able to get under it and a little miscommunication there by Turner as well as Lucas allows the Hofstra Pride to take the 3-2 lead here in set number four. Now going back to serve is Sariana Anglero. Osuna and Bad Bunny, her favorite artist, so she knows some Spanish music, I must say. I know a little bit too. I know those are two well well, good artist as the Hofstra Pride goes over the net. With Seton Hall able to get under it, set up their offensive side. Perry Lucas with the hit, able to get dugged out, though. And we have a little bit of a rally here for this point. As Seton Hall down 3-2, to two, a block up at the front. Hofstra Pride diving on the hardwood as they're still able to get it over the net within the three hits. And now with a little soft touch. Still working their way. The ball still finding its way up in the air. Emily Turner with the hit getting under it is Voss. And now the Hofstra Pride near side soft touch sails out of bounds off the hands of that front line of Seton Hall. And now the Pride up by two. Four to two is the score here. As again, getting in a lot of rallies here. Anglero back to serve right now. Her brother Eric Anglero plays basketball at For Florida Atlantic. The serve gets over. Now with the near side, that hit just a little too strong there by Ilieva. And the Hofstra Pride on a little bit of a run here. Five to two is the score in favor of the team coming out of the Colonial Athletic Association. The serve over. It's Perry Lucas able to get under it. Now Ilieva able to correct her mistake early on. Gets the kill registered there. Ilieva had, a, had her name called a lot earlier on in this match, but she was able to register her fifth kill of the afternoon. But so far, hasn't really done much as Dolezal back to serve goes over for the Pirates now on the far side. That ball up in the air right now for the Pirates as Lucas, a little too strong on the hit, sailing over the end line. And after Seton Hall is able to get a point, the Pride gets a point once again, doubling up the Pirates 6-3 here in the fourth set. Seton Hall up two sets to one. 
As the score is six to three, back to serve is Martinovic. As Seton Hall getting on the red, trying to kick it up in the air. A, a very creative way to attack the ball there is Jay Kubowski, but doesn't work as it sails out of bounds. And Seton Hall down by four. We'll have to call a timeout here in the fourth set. Seven to three is the score as we're going to take a break here. As you're watching Seton Hall Volleyball on the Power Sports Network presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. In the NFL, three teams came into week seven without a blemish on the record, but only one team now remains undefeated. The Titans, Steelers, and Seahawks were the three teams without a loss. In a matchup between two undefeated teams, the Steelers defeated the Titans 27-24 after Steven Koskowski missed a 45-yard field goal that would have sent the game into overtime. On the topic of overtimes, the Seahawks suffered their first loss of the season, falling to the Arizona Cardinals 37-34 in the extra period. Locally, unfortunately, we have to talk about them, but the New York Jets fell to the Buffalo Bills 18-10 to remain winless on the season. In other NFL news, the Ravens have officially signed former All-Pro receiver Des Bryant to their practice squad. Bryant hasn't played in the NFL since November of 2018 after he suffered an Achilles tear at practice with the New Orleans Saints. The Ravens hope to get the same production from Bryant that he was able to give in his seven years with the Cowboys.